Parents have multiple jobs in the world, but their most important one is to raise their child in a way that prepares them for the world that they'll soon be part of. If you think about your own parents, you can think of times that they may have raised you right and perhaps times that they could have done better. But if they were there for you, truly there for you, then they did their jobs. However, in the wild, animals are not as great at being consistent parents. There are all sorts of situations where animals will abandon and betray their child. Join us as we have a look at 20 of the worst animal parents in the world. Number 20. Pandas I'm going to sour your opinions on pandas very quickly, so if you don't want your outlook on them changed, you'll probably want to look away now. Because in the realm of pop culture, pandas can be seen as some of the most cutest and sweetest of creatures out there. They're endangered and that helps to tailor the narrative to become something along the lines of they can do no wrong. However, they do wrong all the time. Pandas are some of the biggest jerks in the animal kingdom and how they sometimes treat their young is proof of that. You see, it's very common in the wild for a mother to give birth to multiple offspring. You can think of cats or rabbits, and they sometimes breed in great numbers. But if pandas do that during a pregnancy, it can be fatal for the cubs. Pandas only have so much milk within them, and as a result, if they birth two children at once, they'll pick the one that they deem to be the strongest and raise that one while letting the other one die. What's more, because they only eat things that have certain levels of nutritional value like bamboo, the mother is always going to put its own safety above its baby. One time, a zoo panda had a mother that gave birth to twins, and to ensure that both of them survived, the zookeepers would constantly swap them out so that the mother could take care of them both without realizing it. That's a whole lot of steps to try and save a cub, but it's necessary when you consider the alternative. And you might think, but it's not the panda mother's fault, but isn't it really? If the mothers have been having this issue for generations, they could have evolved to get more milk, but instead they just let their children die. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Horses Here's another animal that's about to become tainted in your eyes. There are many humans out there that want nothing more than to have children so that they can carry on their family legacy. And when it comes to horses, they have the drive to do it so strongly that the males are afraid of not having children. For whatever reason, they fully understand that they need to pass on their genes to the next generation, and as a result, stallions with good genes are preferred over ones that don't have any. Those male horses will mate with as many mares as they possibly can so that they can have a large cropping of offspring. On the surface, that sounds like the typical animal behavior, and it's not uncommon for them to be polyamorous. However, the males are so paranoid about their offspring that if they think that one of the children the females has is not theirs, they'll actually try to kill it. Straight up, they'll kill the foals because they don't think that it belongs to them. Just as disturbing, this happens among pretty much every horse species, and it's even been caught on film during the making of some documentaries about feral horses. But wait, it gets even worse. You see, the females know that the males expect to have a lot of offspring, so when she's pregnant, she'll continue to mate with the males so that they all think that her foal will be theirs. She's also aware that the baby's in danger if the male discovers that it's not. As a result of that, she has the ability to abort the pregnancy herself. That's right, if she realizes that there's a male that she can't mate with for one reason or another, she'll kill the baby off inside of her in order to ensure that it's not born. That kind of behavior should not be needed, and yet it has to happen with these particular horses. Number 18. Darwin Frogs 
Now, if you think about what a true parental dynamic should be, it would be along the line of the male and female sharing responsibilities so that their children can live. They don't all have to do what the other does, but at the very least, they should each do something to contribute to the growth of their offspring. And when it comes to Darwin frogs, that's not the case at all. If you aren't familiar with these frogs, that's okay, because they're only found in South America, and they're endangered at that. The female frog will become pregnant and then lay about 40 eggs, and then does nothing at all afterwards. She's 100% fine with her task being to lay the eggs, and then she couldn't care less about what happens next. Not the dynamic you would expect from a mother who just laid some eggs. If things were to end there, the babies would all die, and the species would become eradicated. Thankfully, though, the father of the eggs is ready to step up to the plate, and once they're laid, he'll then step in as the protector. He'll carefully watch over them for a couple of weeks, and then the eggs will begin to move. And when that happens, he'll actually swallow them up. Not as a meal, though. He'll do that to protect them further so that they can develop in peace. It's a bit atypical, but it clearly does work, because after the tadpoles hatch, the father will split up the little ones so that they can begin the next stage of life. And that may not be your typical father-mother dynamic, but it does work. And that being said, it's a good thing that this dynamic is not found all over the animal kingdom. Number 17. Koalas now we'll get back to creatures that you may think can do no wrong, and trust me when I say that this next one may not be wrong, but it's really disgusting. Picture this, what's the worst food that your parents have ever made you? The meal that you just can't stand eating, and yet they make you eat it for one reason or another. No matter what they fed you, baby koalas do have it worse. You see, when us humans are born, we're almost automatically infused with things that are going to help us over time, such as having bacteria in our gut, which allows allows us to eat food without issue. However, for baby koalas, they don't have that gut bacteria immediately and that's a problem. So what are they supposed to do? Well, the mother feeds them feces. Yes, I'm being serious. The mother will basically force feed her children to nuzzle her backside so that she can release a substance called pap. The pap is basically feces and it has all kinds of bacteria within it. And as a result of them eating it, yes, they really do have to eat it. They're able to get the bacteria needed to survive later on in life. On the one hand, you could praise the mother for finding a way to get her babies to an age where they can live without fear of being unable to eat eat. But looking at this from the outside, that's just nasty. Here's another case of animals needing to evolve beyond something in order to get better as a species, and yet they're not doing that. In fact, they seem fine with feeding their kids literal crap. You should all remember this next time that you insult your parents cooking, because as this proves, it could always be worse. Number 16. Harp Seal one of the things that many of us would expect from mothers in the wild is that they would watch out for their young until they're able to take care of themselves at the very least. But that's not often what happens with certain species. Instead, they'll get a period of care and then be abandoned to the fates. A great example of this is the harp seal. They've easily one of the oddest bonds between mother and child that you'll ever see. When a baby seal is born, the mother will be 100% dedicated to it. In fact, for the first 12 days of that baby seal's life, the mother will actually not even eat. It's going to focus on providing milk and protection to the seal to help it grow. But what happens on that 13th day? Well, not unlike something out of a horror movie, the mother is out of there. But unlike the mother of Jason Voorhees, she's not going out on a mission to avenge her child. Instead, she's going out to mate once again. That's right, she ditches the little child that she just had so that she can shack up with another male. What a world! So then what happens to the baby? Well, they simply exist. They're left on a patch of ice and they just sit there for the next six weeks. They'll rely on their body fat to survive during that time, but it also means that they're not moving around much and they're open to attacks from predators and can't swim or do much to get to safety. It's only after the eighth week of their life that they're able to go off on their own. Because of the unique cycle of care, over 30% of all baby harp seals die within their first year. Number 15. Burying Beetle 
If you've been watching our videos for a while, then you know that we have no love lost for insects of any kind. We find them disgusting, annoying, and they seem to be everywhere. But now they can also add bad parenting to some of their resumes. When it comes to the burying beetle, they have a method of raising children that's frankly diabolical. You see, when they raise their children, they'll do it within the dead body of a mouse, which is disgusting, but also apparently necessary. The mother will eat the mouse over time and then regurgitate it for her children to eat. Birds do a similar tactic with worms. It's very disgusting, but it apparently works to an extent. The problem is that there isn't enough food to go around for all the children. So what's a mother beetle to do? Well, the simple answer is she sees which of her children act a certain way. Specifically, she sees which of the children are smart enough to get her attention, and if they get the nod, then they get fed. So what if they aren't able to get their mother's attention? Well, then do they simply die? No, it's far worse than that. If the children can't get fed, they become the mother's food. That's right, the burying beetle will eat her own young if they don't get her attention during feeding. They're full-on cannibals. Now, I would happily recommend some other spots to get some extra food, but I'm also pretty sure sure this beetle wouldn't be up for it. I mean, it's seriously messed up, and yet that's hardly the only parent out there that eats their young. Number 14. Ducks now this one may shock you, but I promise that it's true. When you go to the lake, you sometimes see a row of ducks going through the water. It is an adorable sight, and the mother duck with all of her ducklings all in a perfect row is a wonderful thing to see and something to be treasured. But do you notice that it's not the male ducks who are leading them? The reason for this is quite simple. There are times when male ducks, aka drakes, not to be confused with Drake, who has his own issues when it comes to family, will get aggressive with baby ducks. Ducks. Now, to be clear, it doesn't happen with every duck, so it's not an immediate thing to look out for. However, not unlike the horses that I talked about earlier, drakes are driven at times to mate in order to preserve the species, and as a result, they'll sometimes see the baby ducks as a kind of impediment to the growth of the species through their gene pool. As a result of that, they'll the baby ducks so that they can mate with the mother. That's a vicious cycle no matter how you sugarcoat it. They will intentionally m babies so that they can make some of their own. It's wrong, and what's more, they're apparently pretty efficient when it comes to the young ones. So if you're a duck owner, you'd be advised on the behaviors of these drakes so that you can look out for them and keep the ducklings safe. Number 13. Cuckoo. Now, if you've ever heard someone say that a person they know is cuckoo, it's because they think that person is crazy or nuts or what have you. But where does the term come from? Well, it might be because of the bird known as the cuckoo, which is nuts in its own right due to how it treats its children and other animals in general. I've already shown you some animals that abandon their babies, but this one is arguably worse for a variety of reasons. First, they don't only abandon their children, they abandon them when they're still in the egg. So what happens to that egg? Well, the mother cuckoo will put them in the nest of another bird so that they can raise the chick instead of them. Oh, but don't say, well, at least it'll be raised well, because there's a cost to doing that kind of business. You see, the young cuckoo will come out of the egg before the other hatchlings, and then it will grow at a rate that requires the new mother to focus on it over the other younger birds. And as a result, some of the other babies in the nest will due to interference. Not only is that mother pawning off the responsibility to another parent, but they're ensuring that others are going to die off just so their child can live. Now do you see why some people are cuckoo? That's just nuts. Number 12. Lioness. I'm going to put a caveat on this one because there are plenty of cases of mothers of the pride going to great lengths, not only for their children, but others that they deem worthy of protection. You may recall a story where a young human girl was kidnapped and she was later protected by three lionesses after she escaped. That's some motherly instincts right there. However, there is a limit and it has to do with who's the boss. As you likely know, lions believe in the structure of a pride. There's one alpha male lion and the rest of the pride are female. Females. That male is the lone source of the genes in the pride. 
but the circle of life states that the alpha can be taken down by another. If that challenge is won and the former leader d then the new leader at times will not want their offspring in the pride for one reason or another. And as such, the new leader will then go around and all the children that the former male leader had. Where are the mothers in all of that? Well, they simply let it happen. They're going to allow the new male leader to wipe out the children that they had because that's the dynamic of the pride. Talk about being subservient. Do you recall that the females do a lot more work than the males? So you would think that they would be more inclined to stick up for their children, but nope, it just doesn't happen. Number 11, House Sparrows. They say that hell hath no fury like a woman scorned, but even humans do have a limit on how much that fury will take them. For example, let's say that a couple gets married, and then for one reason or another the man of the couple has an affair, and that leads to a child being born via the mistress. The wife has more than a right to be angry and possibly even get physical with the husband for his infidelity, and that wife might even try to ruin him in simple ways just to get revenge. But one thing that they will not do, more than likely, is the child that was born because that would be inhumane. It's not the child's fault that the husband cheated, but when it comes to the bird known as the house sparrow, they don't put that kind of a limit on themselves. It's just the opposite, in fact. If the mother sparrow finds out that the father cheated on her and had other children, she'll fly to the nests of the mistress and then them all. That's because in her mind, if he doesn't have other children to take care of, then he'll be more focused on taking care of hers. That's right, she'll m his illegitimate children so that he will spend more time raising the ones he has. What kind of madness is this? And how random that such a behavior would be found in a sparrow. Sometimes it's the ones that you'd never expect. Number 10. Black Bears Remember how I talked about the panda mother who preferred to have one baby over having multiples? When it comes to black bears, the reverse is true, and it's equally as terrifying. In the mind of a black bear mother, she wants to have as many children as she possibly can. So, if on the off chance that she gives birth and she only gets one offspring, she'll actually abandon it. That's right, she won't even attempt to raise it. But why? Because it's not worth the effort, which is a horrible way of looking at things for multiple reasons. Not the least of which is that that child is alive. It's a living and breathing black bear that came from within her, and yet she's acting like it's already dead. That's the other thing though, without the mother to help it, the bear cub is 100% dead, so she's dooming it to die just because she couldn't give it brothers and sisters. Number 9. Black Eagles After hearing the last one, you might think that things couldn't get any worse, but I'm not done with the video yet, so things can always get worse. The case in point, we'll talk about the parenting strategy of the Black Eagle. When it comes to this bird of prey, she's fine with having multiple children, but she's also fine with having those children fight to the degree that she'll allow one of them to another one in their squabbles. The mother will happily allow the fight to happen with no interference whatsoever. In her mind, if her children can't survive an attack from their sibling, then they're definitely weak, and a weak creature does not belong in the wilds of the world where dangers are everywhere. So, she is one who believes in survival of the fittest, consequences be danged. Number 8. Rabbits I'm sure some of you out there have had or currently have a rabbit as a pet. They can be easy to take care of and they're adorable to cuddle with, but when it comes to the mother rabbit, they can at times be the worst mother on the entire planet. When they're out in the wild, the mother's going to abandon the children soon after birth and only visit them a few times every day in order to feed them. The intent is to minimize the chance of a predator finding them, but it's still pretty bad. Then if they're in a pinch and are low on energy, or they determine that they have a weak litter, they'll eat their own babies. Yes, they'll eat their children so that they can regain some of the energy they lost during childbirth. And here you thought that rabbits were just infallible. Number 7. Skinks 
Here's another case of a parent going to cannibalism in order to solve a problem, but in this case, it's a problem that has not technically even been enacted yet. When it comes to mothers, they want to protect their young more times than not, and the biggest threat that you have to deal with is predators from other species coming around and seeing your unhatched eggs as their next meal. But that's where the problem comes in, because skinks will be so fearful of a predator coming to get their eggs that the mother will beat them to the punch. and they'll happily eat their own eggs so that the predator can't. That's dooming the children before they've even had the chance to live, and it's just wrong. It's being tricked into doing something that you don't really need to do. Number six, hooded grebs. Now surely we have not found another method by which animal parents are terrible to their children. Surely there has to be another way for things to go horribly wrong. But however, we have found a much more terrible way. The bird known as the hooded grebs begins as a really good parent. They'll lay two eggs and then the mother and father will take their time incubating both of them as they wait for them to hatch. But that's where the twist comes in, because this is a literal case of first come first served. The first egg to hatch gets all of the attention of the parents, and they'll abandon the second one even before it fully hatches. Seriously, what is with all these parents and ditching a child before they even have a chance to live? It's really disturbing. Number 5. Hamsters you're probably really hoping that the bad habit of the mother hamster is benign compared to some of the others that I've talked about so far, but I'm sorry to tell you that that's not the case at all. In fact, mother hamsters are some of the worst of the lot because they too will go and eat their newborns. The twist, if you will, is that scientists are not fully sure why that they're up for doing that. There are two basic theories that have been put out there by the situation. The first is that, not unlike rabbits, they give birth but don't have enough energy to keep going after it, so they simply eat their young. The second theory is that they give birth to so many children, which can be up to 20 at a time, that they will eat them so that they can have enough to take care of the rest. Either way, it's gross, and you'll never look at a hamster the same way again. Number 4. Quakas now we'll go down under to talk about an animal that you'll be grateful is not your mother. The quakas, which I have most likely mispronounced, are creatures that believe in self-interest that would make humans blush. And if you don't believe me, well, here's what they're known for. If they're put into a situation where a predator is after them, let's say like a dingo in this case, The mother will not hesitate to take their offspring and put them right in the line of fire of the predator so that it'll go after them instead of her. Yes, they will willingly sacrifice their children so that they can live. Talk about not giving a crap about your children. The mindset is, well, I can just make another one and then they dart off. Number 3. Mustached Tamarinds I've already shown you plenty of parents on this list that are merciless, but how about one that's actually unforgiving? As in, if you make a single mistake, you're going to be out of their life. That is the case with the mustached tamarind. These are primates, and they have very bad social habits when it comes to them being parents. When the mother is alone, as in they don't have a pack of fellow females around, she'll be incredibly callous with how she raises her kids. If something bad happens with the child, the mother will then push them out of the tree and be done with them. Or if the kid accidentally falls to the ground, the mother's not even going to try and get them back. In their minds, they just prove their weakness, and so they're out. Number 2. Tasmanian Devils it's a good thing that Looney Tunes never showed this side of Taz and whatever mate that he had. Specifically, the mate is the problem in this relationship, if you can even call it that. Female Tasmanian devils try to ensure that they not only have good babies, but that at least some of them survive no matter what. So what does she do? She'll go around to multiple males and sleep with all of them. Through that process, she'll have about 50-ish children in one cycle. But the twist is that she can only feed about four of them, so she'll focus Focus on those four and let the rest either fend for themselves or simply d That means that every time she gives birth, less than 10% of her children are guaranteed to live beyond a certain period. Number 1. Dracula Ants Now I'm not gonna lie, this one's going to suck. 
Yes, there are insects out there called Dracula ants, and they live up to their name in the worst of ways. The mothers of the colony and the queen ant herself will descend upon where the larvae are being born, and then they'll slowly drain the blood from them. But why? So that they, the parents and the queen, can live. The queen goes first, obviously, and then she'll let the others jump in and get in on the action. But the weird thing is, they're also very good about making sure that while they drain the blood, they don't actually kill the larvae, as that would injure the colony. Because you know, you wouldn't want the colony to be injured, but apparently it's just absolutely fine to drain defenseless children of their blood. That's all from the realm of really bad parents in the animal kingdom. Are you surprised that so many animal parents are simply terrible? And which of these stories shocked you the most in terms of how they treat their children? Is there another animal that deserves to be on this list? Be sure to let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.